should be quite straightforward once you kind of get your idea behind what is actually going on. So here's a diagram <coughs> that you won't have to draw on the exam, but you do well to understand what we've actually got. So we have the clock, which is a function of the control uh, unit that sends regular pulses to keep all of the operations in the processor synchronised. You've got the ALU, the arithmetic logic unit, that performs all calculations and makes logical decisions. We've got registers, which is the temporary RAM memory in the processor, and you can see here that there's two main ones that you're going to have to know about, the memory data register and the memory address register. So the function of both of these is that they can temporarily hold data and in particular they hold specific data, so the memory address register holds the addresses which have to be accessed, the memory data register can store results of calculations, the data that's been read from main memory and the data that's to be written to main memory. The control unit has got several different lines of control. Two which you need to know about here are the read and write uh, lines which give the instruction to carry out either a read operation or a write operation. There are some other lines, um, the non-maskable interrupt and interrupt and so on, we'll talk about them when um, we go over the unit. And main memory, which you need to be able to calculate the total addressable um, memory in there. So we've got the address bus, you can see there's arrows going one direction in the data, bu data bus, and the arrows go in both directions, and that is because the address register only carries data to point to some location in, in main memory. And the data bus goes two ways because either memory can be written into memory, so it needs to take it from the memory data register into main memory, or if it's doing a read operation, the memory comes along the data bus into the data register, so it travels both ways. One thing you also need to know is the width of the data bus is usually called the word size, and that is the total number of bits which the processor can handle in a single operation. And if you were to increase the width of the data bus, you would improve the performance of the computer system because it's capable of carrying more data per clock cycle. So we're going to do one of the operations here. And in both operations, the first task is the same for both of them. If whether you're reading or writing, we need to know where we're going to do that operation. So the first thing that needs to happen is the control unit sets up the MAR so that the address bus has the exact address location that needs to be accessed in the computer system in main memory. Next, with this one, because it's carrying out a read operation, it doesn't know anything about the data yet. So the control unit then activates the read line on the control bus. That sends a signal to the rest of the computer system and the location info that the address bus points at, a copy of the data from that memory location is released onto the data bus and it's finally copied into the memory data register where the processor can access it, carry out calculations, comparisons, update it and so on. So that is a um, memory read operation. Now the one thing you have to be careful of is if they're asking you about the fetch execute cycle, those four other steps that were there, I know the number's wrong, are the first four steps. And when it's a fetch execute cycle, it could be that in the main memory it stores ex uh, instructions. So whenever those are copied into the memory data register, the last stage in that is that they are decoded and executed. Now quite similar, but definitely different, is the write operation, which is similar steps that happen in a different order. So if you think about how you would write on a blackboard, if there was like several blackboards in your school, which one would you choose to write on? you need to know what you're going to write and where to write it. So the first thing is, same as the last time, the address bus is given the required address that needs um, to be written to. But definitely this time, because we're doing a write, we need to know what we're also going to write. So the memory data register 
is then given the value that's going to be written to main memory. Because it's they're then set up, the control bus can activate the right line, the control unit rather, can activate the right line on the control bus, which will make the operation that carries the data along the data bus into main memory be carried out. So the address bus would then point to the location in memory it needs to go to, and the data bus would carry the actual physical contents of what's to be written into that storage location. And again, there's no other steps with that one because it is not taking information into the processor, so the instruction couldn't be decoded and executed.